this verse and a, and a lot of verses like it in the, in the Word of God, this verse and many verses like it in the New Testament where Paul stopped, talks like this, these are the verses that opened up the Word of God to me. These verses were worth more than a seminary education. Now, I got a master's degree from seminary, and I want to, I'll tell you this is worth more than that master's degree. Hmm. These verses gave me more than the course in systematic theology where we went through Hodge's book that thick with all the theology systematized. This verse, 2 Timothy 2, verse 7, Consider what I say, and the Lord give the understanding in all things. And God put it right there for you. You don't have to be a seminary graduate to get a hold of the Word of God. You don't have to have a doctor's degree to get the Bible. Blessed is he that readeth. Paul said, Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. If you'll consider what Paul says, God will open up your eyes on this thing, and you'll begin to see, hey, not everything in the Bible is to me. It's all for my learning, but I don't have to wrestle with whether or not I'm supposed to get the baptism with the Holy Ghost. I'm in a different set of last days. Now, folks, this comes down to a very practical, very practical uh, thing of living. If you believe you're here, you know what you're always going to be striving for? You're going to be striving for some spiritual ex experience that God's not giving today. And you're going to be looking for it and striving for it and hoping and thinking and guessing and, and, and praying and, and looking and seeking and searching and still looking for it. And any experience that comes along that's spiritual, you're going to swear it's from God. Folks do it all the time. Now, there was a day whenever I didn't know this, and I did. I saw I wanted everything God had. I got down, I got down one day, I remember down South Georgia, I got down there with a friend down by a fish pond in South Georgia out in the backside of nowhere down below Savannah, Georgia on the coast down there, and we was out there in that field, and, and this friend and I, we, we, were, we were on our hands and knees praying, and uh, it was a hot summer day, and the breeze kind of blew through, and I was wanting to experience so much, I swore up and down. That was a Holy Ghost man coming on us. All it was, just South Georgia wind. By what a lot of this charismatic stuff is. South Georgia wind. And I was looking for some kind of experience, anything, any kind of experience. Listen, there, there are other spirits other than the Spirit of God around today. And you can have a spiritual experience and not know the difference unless you know this book. I'm going to show you what God tells you. I said I had two practical things tonight this last, in these last days in which we live. And they are very practical things. God gives me. And I'll tell you what, it's better than any experience that some charismatic preacher can cook up or concoct. I'm talking about something that works. I'm talking about something, something that, that, that means something. Now, I just read in the newspaper today, I'd heard it on the uh, radio as I was coming back from uh, Sun Laws up there yesterday, I'd, I'd heard that uh, Swagger uh, had been uh, caught again. Uh, God help the church he was out there preaching to. God help him. You know, I, I just can't imagine anybody, you know, after all the other stuff went on, to still have him in a meeting. Somebody he was out there in a meeting God help him somehow or another. It's the, according to the newspaper today, he was driving one of his board members, driving his Jaguar. And that's a Jaguar. That is a Jaguar. That's a, that's, a, that's a pretty good automobile for a preacher to be following Acts 2, 3, and 4. And Simon Peter said, silver and gold, have I none? Here, Jim has got a Jaguar to drive around and all that, he's got money to pay a prostitute because he just picked up one. That's what the newspaper said. And the, and the prostitute, the, the gal, she had it right. She said, I think it's great. Said he's one who spends all his time crying on television for money. People give him money and said he just comes here and gives it to us. This is great. 
That's what the newspaper said. I'm going to tell you something. There's something in 2 Timothy chapter 3 that would have been much better for Jimmy Swaggart to have followed than to follow all of his experience centered, oriented type stuff that he's been doing for all these years. There's something in 2 Timothy 3 that would have kept him off of that street, that would have kept him out of that 10 block area where they got dope and prostitutes. It would have kept him from his, from his there's, there's, there's something in 2 Timothy 3, very practical, that would have kept him from the past experience that he had. There's something in 2 Timothy 3 that will keep us from it. If we follow 2 Timothy 3, there's something here that will keep us from it. This, this will do what spiritual, quote, spiritual experiences can never do, folks. Now 2 Timothy Chapter 3. See, if you're looking, if you're looking for some kind of spiritual experience, what I'm saying is this spiritual experience does not produce holy living. Not in this age. Not in this age. Now anybody can get up, anybody can get up and do what I'm doing right now with a little practice, a little reading, a little background. And uh, a few facts, you know, you can, you, can, you can stand up and you can go through the motions and you can learn how to give invitations. You can learn how to elicit emotional responses from people. You can learn how to give an invitation where you sing, you know, the sad songs. You remind folks of mama. You remind folks of daddy. You remind folks of graveyards. And you remind folks, you, you can bring in, and I'm not saying all that's, you know, not true. Death is very real. You ought to think about it and you ought to realize you've got but one life to live. And it's a short time. But what I'm saying is you can, you can learn to draw and to pull emotions. And folks have all kind of emotional experiences. I've been preaching long enough to see them come, see them go. And in 2 Timothy 3, there's some real just bedrock practical things in here for us tonight, particularly two things. I mean, I've got three of them, but particularly the two of them that'll keep you from the kind of error that a lot of folks are falling into. PTL club. I mean, folks, where could you find more experience, more experiences than, than that that you saw? You saw it on, on PTL. You saw it on television. You saw them, and you, you heard them talk of their experiences and how God just, just how so real he was, and they had these spiritual experiences. Why, uh, uh, Swagger is very impressive with his uh, uh, platform ability and the, the piano and the, 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 the music is all geared to the same thing, the, the, the whole thing. And uh, my, some, you know, it's just wonderful preaching. But the proof, the, listen, the proof is, is not in, in right here. This, this is not the proof of Dave Reese. This is not the proof of Dave Reese. Not here, no sir. And the proof is not some emotional, so-called spiritual experience you have in church. That's not the proof. Anybody can do that. That's been going on for a long time. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Now, we said first thing this morning, here's what happens. You have a breakdown, you have to you have a breakdown in these last ages, at last age, you have a breakdown in character. And if there's anything we ever needed today in churches, everywhere, we need some character. We just need plain old outright character. We need somebody who will tell you the truth. We need somebody who will stay by the word. You see, it says men should be lovers of their own selves. Me first. What am I going to get out of it? Instead of dying to self, and that's the, that's the heart of this whole thing of character, real, real character, instead of dying to self, then folks are living just for themselves. How to advance myself. It leads to the covetousness, the boasting, the pride, 
blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. There you have all of the so-called the so-called gays in in the land. Truce breakers. People don't keep the word. Your word, your word is, is what you are. You make a promise, you ought to keep your promise. Make good promises and keep those promises. Don't make bad promises. But even if you even if you make one, it's a poor choice. If I mean if it's an honorable thing that you're doing, you know what you ought to do? You ought to bend over backwards to keep it, even if it costs you. You ought to keep your word. Not be a truce breaker. False accusers. Incontinent. That's, that's unable to control. Out of control. Fierce. Despisers of those that are good. Traitors. Heady. High-minded. All these things. All these things. Character traits. We, we lack today character. And I mean it's here, it's here with us uh, tonight just as much as it is in Millbrook, Alabama. Just as it is across this land. We lack character. I don't see how it is that uh, I was watching some more of those proceedings this afternoon. I don't see how it is that uh, here's a man being accused of uh, what they call sexual harassment. And there sitting on the Judiciary Committee is a man that just this year all kind of questionable stuff went on. Uh, I heard one woman talking about how that she had seen a woman being uh, uh or drunk, mugged in the park or something, and she stepped in. She'd seen a, uh, another person being accosted by someone, and she had stepped in, and now she'd seen this. She'd st I, and I suppose this. She would have had to have said, had she been down at West Palm Beach at the Kennedy compound, she would have seen that going on. She would have stepped in and stopped that too. And there's, here's this bird sitting right across the table, and, and all the other questionable things have gone on, had Chappaquiddick happened in your life, you would have been so far under the jail that had to pipe air to you. But because there was a lot of money and influence and power involved, he's sitting right there across. Not only that, but uh, some of the others there. I'm not saying I, you know, I know, I'm just saying I'm making an observation that these accusers probably are more guilty than the accused. And what we've done, we've, we've come down to, you know, to that level. Well, she's been there for a long time. <laughs> Why, uh, Ralph Abernathy put out a book about Martin Luther King. Wasn't it Ralph Abernathy? I'm, I'm right. And I got the book at home. And uh, according to him and according to everybody else, uh, Martin Luther King was the biggest sexual harasser. If, 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 if this guy's a sexual harasser, Martin Luther King was worse than he is 10,000 times, even if he's done all these things. What I'm saying is how can this guy be a great hero? John F. Kennedy, he's another one. Quite... Well known now, all of his escapades in the White House. Someone suggested they ought to change the name of the White House to another name because of his activity. And what what we're seeing is we're seeing just a, a a character. Listen, and it's not just in the Senate; it's here in Millbrook, Alabama, too. It's not just in Millbrook; we got it in Victor Baptist Church too. You say, oh, we're surely. Pure, we're free from all sin. No, we're not. No, we're not. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you that in these last days, perilous times have come, and and what has happened is is there's been a breakdown in character, and it's going to take everything you've got to go against the grain, to go against the flood, and to come out of it and salvage your own character and the character of your children, your family, your church, and your community and so on. It's difficult. It's easy, it's very easy today to follow along with this crap. Very easy. It's a thing to do today. 
breakdown in character. So there's a the, the character of this age is a low character. The moral the, the morality is very low. Oh, another thing. If all those things are sexual harassment, man, the beer companies harass us uh, a thousand times every hour. You sit on there and you can count the, the naked women or almost the semi-nude women come across the screen to sell beer. Now, who's kidding who? And these guys sitting up there, don't they, they don't need to tell me. <laughs> they don't need to tell me. Uh, have you ever been to Washington, D.C.? Have you ever driven just a couple of miles there from the White House, just driven down the streets? I had the privilege one. I went up there and preached one time, and I had a, a guy that uh, gave me a little tour of Washington, D.C. Buddy used to be the, uh, what do they call him, president. He's president. One of the biggest street gangs in D.C. I mean, he'd been right down on the street with them. He knew where everybody was. You know, we drive down the street, you know, these guys up on the building up there, building everything. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Hey, how you doing? He said, I'm just serving Jesus. He'd holler out, you know. Uh, he kind of, He's kind of wild, you know, but I thank God he got saved. They put me over to Holiday Inn, a real swanky place. I was over to Holiday Inn. I was supposed to meet him for breakfast. I have to tell you about this. I was supposed to meet him for breakfast, so he said, my assistant pastor is going to come over and eat breakfast with you. I said, fine. And I'm sitting over there in the Holiday Inn, got all these ferns and all these lattice works and everything. You know how it is. Everybody's there, real fancy thing. And I look up, and here comes this guy in. He's got a suit. He's got a suit on. He's got a tie, and that thing's tied about, you know, and look like a shirt squeezed together there and tied up there. And I look down, and he's got, he look, he's got tennis shoes on. And they weren't just tennis shoes. There's an old kind with the black with a white, you know, ball on the outside of them, I thought, and the white, you know, so... I thought, my word, he sat down there with me and we had breakfast and everything. That's assistant pastor. He'd just been off drugs for a short, you know, got saved. And You'd have to, you, you think I'm kidding you, but you'd have to be there to see it. Now, I want to tell you something. I preached a meeting there, and you know where I, where I preached? I preached there just, just out of D.C. in Maryland, and I preached a revival in a converted chicken house. It ain't been a chicken house for, you know, it hadn't been an ex-chicken house for too long. You could tell by the smell. Huh. <laughs> That's where I preached. I'm going to tell you, buddy carried me around D.C. He said, I want to show you. Let's go around. Uh, we were around there, and there's a church. And he said, see that gal over there in the corner? I said, yeah. He said, you know, said what she does. She comes out here, works the street during the day, and she stays in the church. So the church gives her room board over there. She stays over there. But she's street walking. See that one over there? I mean, this is all around the White, all around the White House. Who are these guys trying to kid? Now, I want to know who's, who's giving them all this business. I don't think it's all the tourists. <laughs> don't I remember something about a senator by the name of Barney Frank? Yes. <laughs> well, you think, you think we've got... You think all the dwarfs here are Snow Whites, you know, <laughs> up there. Hmm. <clears throat> I just think, man, you know, character, the character. You listen to you listen to any of the uh, you watched any of the MTV lately? God to help you if you do. That's just pure raw sex. So that is talking about harassment, talking about using women. Told him, uh, you know, it don't take a bright guy to look at a beer commercial. I tell women are being used. They're getting paid for it. Those, those gals, you know, pretending like you can keep that kind of figure and drink all that bud. I don't care if you drink light, whatever you're going to drink, man. <laughs> you ain't going to keep those kind of figures, drinking the light. What, what we're faced with, we're faced with a, it's superficial. It's superficial. The, the character, somehow, somehow or another, the, 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 the character has been lost. True character is gone. These two men would kind of hide it. Now they don't.
perilous times, a loss of character. Look at the next thing. Verse number four says, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. You know what you're going to have to fight in this age? I'll tell you what you'll have to fight. Entertainment. You're living in an entertainment age. Entertainment. And it pulls on you. It gets you. It's a, it, it robs you of holiness. It'll rob you of godliness. It'll rob you of a family. It'll, 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 it'll rob you. Some of you kids right now, you're trying to dress like folks you've seen on TV. And your hero is somebody on, on a TV program. I, I saw some, somebody was getting, uh, my wife sent me to the store last night to get some stuff for the thing over here the fellowship was having. I looked at one of those, you know, you always you go by the thing and there's all the tabloids there. You know, you have seen them? And uh, they had up the top there had somebody, I forget what this guy's name is, but he used to be on Dallas. Oh, he's one of the heartthrobs on Dallas. And then he showed him he's got AIDS now. Well, he shouldn't look too much like a heartthrob now. Somebody want to go up there and put a big smackaroo on him? Lock lips with him for a while, huh? <laughs> uh-uh, not me. Uh-uh. Or with anybody he <laughs> smooshed around on. No thanks. Rock Hudson. Ted Turner's still running Rock Hudson movies. Um, what I think about Ted Turner, something else, I think he's got, well, anyway. <laughs> lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Today, to keep a, a church congregation, you just about got to entertain them to keep them. Now, if we'd gone into a little more of the entertainment business around here, we'd have big church congregation. <laughs> you can have a bunch of folks. Well, you can entertain them in. We'll get a few singings come in, do a few other things, get a gospel magician or two, pulling rabbits out of the pews and everything else, and <laughs> we'll have all kinds of stuff going on here. Entertainment. I'm about all the entertainment you're going to get. It's about... Me and I'll bring Dr. Noe in there once in a while. He'll be our big entertainment. Crippled preacher. Amen. Hobbles up here, has to wrestle up here to try to get up here. Crippled. That's about the entertainment we need. Amen. God help us. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Here's something else. Verse 5, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Religion. Rituals. I guess I'll just put ritualistic religion. These, these, are, these are what you got. You don't have your, we don't have our sons and daughters prophesying, folks. We don't have our sons and daughters coming forward to invitation and saying, I'll go for Jesus Christ. There's 3,000 languages, don't have one Bible verse. We'll go! We believe the word of God. You don't have that. You know why you don't have it? Because character is lacking. Entertainment is vying for their attention. Ritualistic religion has robbed them of real, true living for God. Get away. Get away from all this stuff. Some of our young people have had the opportunity to see a little bit of, just a little bit, just, just a little bit, of, of a real service to God where you don't have the rituals. And you came back, you fired up. And rightly so, you ought to be fired up. You ought to be fired up. It does something, does something to you to to get out and walk out into a jungle and you get out there in that jungle and then you look and you see some folks who are giving their, giving their very lives to get the gospel of these people and then you remember, you remember the padded pews, you remember the lights, you remember the air conditioning and you wonder how in the world could, could I think that that's, that's, that was, that, that's, that's it, that that's serving God, that, 
that just sitting on the pew and talking about it, how could I think that? I'll tell you what. These last days, the God of this world, the God of this world, Satan, has got this orchestrated to rob you. Some of you went, it won't take too long till you cool down. Because you're not going to do what 2 Timothy 3 tells you to do about it. And I'm going to give you that in a minute. See, these, these things will rob you. I have to fight against this with everything I've got. You know, it's awful easy to stand. I want to stand and talk like this and share some things with you from the depths of my heart to yours. Have an amen and go home. And come back next week and we'll have this psychological session again next week. We'll all try to understand each other. I don't have to fight that stuff. It sounds like a late night Christian radio, you know. You ever heard that? Oh man, I'd rather hear the Stanley Brothers sing There's a Light at the End of the Way. <laughs> I don't think, I, listen, I, I'm, you know me, I'm not, I, I'm not arguing, I just told you I'm not arguing for an emotional thing, but somehow or another I think the preacher ought to get his heart into preaching. And you've got to get away from this ritualistic stuff. I have to fight that stuff all the time. It's easy. The God of this world wants you to do it. God of this world wants you to uh, choir. God of this world wants you, and I'm glad for order. You've got to have it if you're going to sing together. But I'm going to tell you something. You can get so orderly, you'll just, you'll just ritualistically move God out of everything you're doing. You can get so orderly. You know what you ought to do? Now, let me just preach to you a little bit about singing. You know what you ought to do? You learn everything you can learn, and you do it as, as properly. I'm talking about music-wise, you can. But listen, I'd like, to, I'd like to see you just throw your heart all into it one time. I like to see you just throw. I like to see you do the same thing you have to do preaching. See, I can't just preach the gospel. I can't just load up the gospel gun with some doctrines and fire it. You know what I have to do to really do to really speak to your heart, to really get it across. You know what I have to do? I have to put myself in that gospel gun and fire it. I'm just a fool for Christ's sake. You have, to, you have to get out of that ritualistic stuff. And that doesn't mean loose, licentious. That doesn't mean at all. That doesn't mean, that doesn't mean uh, 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 poor form and all of that. You do it right, but you do it with heart. All your heart. I've got, I, I got an outline up here. Believe it or not, I plan, you know, you may not think so, but I... I know where I'm going. <laughs>